Hi, I'm Kirby Allison. Thanks for all your comments and questions that you guys have posted on our YouTube channel. After reading them all and answering as many as possible, I've selected five that we're gonna feature in this week's Q&A video. Each of these individuals I have selected will receive a complimentary pair of our Wellington shoelaces as a token of our appreciation for their participation on our channel. In today's Q&A video, we're gonna be answering your questions about wet shaving. Remember, if you have any questions or comments while you're watching this video, please ask them in the comments section below. I enjoy getting back to you and answering as many of your questions as possible. So to all of you men out there that have surrendered to the misery of multi-blade cartridge shaving, this Q&A is for you and it's meant to serve as a primer on wet shaving. The reality is, is that most men dread shaving and for good reason. It's expensive and incredibly uncomfortable for the face and with cheap shave foams and five cartridge razors, you know, you don't get an experience that is really to be relished and enjoyed. Not only is shaving with a multi-blade cartridge razor physically offensive to your face, it's financially obscene. And all that leads is to a cascade of the experience getting worse. You know, because the cartridges are so expensive, uh, inevitably men don't replace them once they become dull, and that creates an even uh, further inferior shaving experience. And it just all results in something that most men just totally dread and give up on. I wanna say the moment that you go to an electric razor is the moment that you've totally given up on shaving as an experience that can actually be enjoyed. You know, whenever I was younger, uh, you know, I was using an electric razor in the morning just because I hated shaving so much. And it wasn't until college on my first summer in New York uh, that I discovered wet shaving and what a proper double-edged razor could do to transform that experience. You know, with a proper badger brush, you know, a nice shave cream and a double-edged safety razor, uh, you can totally transform your shaving experience from something that you dread to something that you look forward to and actually something that takes better care of your face and better care of your skin and alleviates, totally eliminates a lot of the problems that men otherwise experience with multi-blade cartridges. Now, you've seen the advent of these subscription programs, which are great. I mean, they've tried to at least re uh, remove the financial offensiveness uh, out of the shaving industry. But at the end of the day, you still end up with the same inferior shave, you know, with generic shave foams and uh, a really, you know, crummy blade. A few years ago, a friend of mine that is a very talented director approached me about uh, filming a parody that was basically our response to the Dollar Shave Club. Uh, and we called it our Thousand Dollar Shave Society. So it's a little bit tongue in cheek. You know, we filmed this a few years ago. Uh, take a look at the video. There comes a time in life when pregnancy isn't a mistake. It's hitting the target with dead eye aim. It's called becoming a man. And a man doesn't shave his face with a dollar razor he got from an internet warehouse club. He lathers up with Castle Forbes shave cream and a proper badger brush. After all, there's no better brush for a man ready to procreate than one made of an incredibly soft animal known to defend its young from bears, wolves, and packs of wild dogs. Good. Now it's time to get down to business with a stag antler razor. Because if the deer isn't going to use that antler to secure a mate, then you are. Finish up with a dab of alcohol-free aftershave emulsion, a glass of alcohol-full scotch, and presto. You're ready to make babies. On purpose. <laughs> so, you know, the whole entire idea of that video was uh, really, you know, our response to the Dollar Shave Club, which was the Thousand Dollar Shave Society, that a real man, someone that is, you know, uh, well-traveled and well-cultured, is someone that really savors uh, his shaving experience in the morning uh, and is very deliberate and does it on purpose. So the whole entire idea of make babies on purpose uh, was just a parody to uh, being serious about life, taking oneself serious, and really taking things to the next level. 
Now, uh, this Q&A is dedicated to all the men that have basically surrendered themselves to the misery of multi-blade cartridge shaving. You know, so let's learn a little bit about wet shaving. You know, we invite you to, uh, to go on this journey with us. Uh, I'll tell you a little bit about my shave routine and my experience, and then in future videos, we'll really go through the technique of how to properly wet shave. So our first question today is from Jaslyn T, and it reads, uh, Kirby, how do you shave? What's your routine? What products do you use? Uh, and an aficionado like you must have something uh, to introduce. So that's absolutely right, Jessalyn. You know, wet shaving has uh, been one of those uh, experiences that once I discovered it, totally transformed my life. I mean, you know, using a proper dub double edge razor, a badger brush, and you know, these incredible shaving creams, it really took an experience that I really uh, dreaded and didn't look forward to and transformed it to something that I look forward to, enjoy, and really savor in the morning. I look forward to wet shaving now. I don't have any ingrown hairs. I don't have any razor burn. Uh, and actually, in a lot of ways, you know, proper wet shaving is skincare for men. And so by using good shave creams and a proper razor, you're taking great care of your skin. And for men out there with a real heavy beard, there's actually nothing better out there than a double-edged shave. It takes a little bit of technique and practice, uh, but once you get the hang of it, it's really easy to shave, uh, actually to produce a better, cleaner, and closer shave with a double-edged razor than you would oftentimes with the Gillette, Mach, whatever. So uh, I've got a very thick beard, and I shave in the morning and almost as much time as I would otherwise do it with the cartridge razor, except at the end of the experience, I feel great and I've actually enjoyed it. We have a very focused selection uh, on uh, the Hanger Project of our shaving accessories, and these are all items uh, that I use myself, uh, that I love and completely stand behind. Uh, we've got two different brands of shaving creams, a Taylor of Old Bond Street, which is uh, located on St. James Street right by my club, uh, and then we have Castle Forbes, and the Castle Forbes uh, Cedar, uh, Cedarwood and Sandalwood Essential Shave Cream is one of the uh, creamiest uh, you know, shave creams I've ever used. I absolutely love this. Uh, and they have, uh, again, one of the best pre-shaves that, again, is water-based, not oil-based, which will clog a badger brush. And uh, one of my favorite aftershaves also. You know, the, the type of blade that you use to shave is really important. Uh, there is, uh, you know, as many uh, different uh, double-edged uh, blades as there are uh, shave creams out there in the world. Uh, and they vary in degree of sharpness and flexibility or stiffness. And uh, my favorite is the Astra. You know, I've tried some of the feathers uh, and some of the other, you know, Parker blades, uh, but I find them too sharp for me. So the Astra, in my opinion, is a great happy medium. You know, it's sharp, it gets you a really, really uh, close shave, uh, but it's not so sharp uh, that you're, uh, you know, at risk to butcher your face. Now, as far as razors are concerned, I have two razors that I use regularly. Uh, I have a Mueller. This is the Mueller uh, R41. Uh, this is an open comb razor. We're going to be adding these to the website soon. Uh, and an open comb razor, you know, is has the little uh, slots right here that allows more of the blade to make direct contact with the face, and it uh, achieves an even closer shave uh, than what you would otherwise get with the closed comb. You know, I really wouldn't advise an open comb for a beginner because it does take a little bit of practice and skill. Uh, but, you know, once you catch the hang of it, and as long as you're not using a blade that is uh, obnoxiously sharp, uh, you can really get a phenomenal shave with an open comb uh, razor. And then the second razor that I use uh, is a Merker uh, slant, which uh, actually keeps the blade at an angle. And what that does is as you're shaving, it slices the hair, you know, at, at an angle and kind of a twist, uh, which is supposed to allow an even closer shave. Uh, and what I like about this is it's a closed comb. So again, it's close, but not aggressive. So these are kind of, you know, my personal products. Um, you know, I have a few shave creams. You know, I've probably got all three of these shave creams. I keep them right next to my sink. Uh, and depending on how I feel in the morning, I might use the, you know, I might use the, um, the Castle Forbes or I might use the Taylor Bond Street. And same thing with my razors. You know, if I have a little bit more time and I want a really close shave, you know, I'll use my open comb uh, razor, my Mueller. Um, and then, you know, if I have a little bit more time, you know, uh, or if I don't have as much time, you know, maybe I use, uh, you know, my slant. So that's what's uh, fun about this is that you can really play around with it. 
The other thing that I love is that all these products, I mean, for one, the razors and the badger brushes almost last forever. Uh, I mean, the razors uh, do. Uh, the blades are incredibly cheap. I mean, we sell this entire uh, pack of uh, 20 cartridges of five blades. It's 100 blades, I think it's $30, right? So it's 30 cents a blade. You know, I could shave with a new blade every day and still be spending a fraction of what I would otherwise spend if I was using uh, cartridge razors. Uh, and then the same with the creams, you know, they just all last a long time. So, so Jaslyn, great question. These are a few of my favorite products. And you guys out there, you know, I'm sure we've got a lot of uh, viewers on this channel that are wet shaving aficionados. If you have any products that you guys love, you know, please share them with us and let us know in the comment section below. Our second question is from Tartic Knight, and it reads, small trick uh, on the toiletry and shaving notes. I use a travel brush case and it's super inexpensive, but protects the bristles and prevents any folding damage to the brush. Uh, so great suggestion. Uh, absolutely, there's no question that if you're traveling with the Badger brush, you really want it uh, protected so that the bristles don't crink or, or get damaged uh, in your briefcase or in your luggage, sorry. And, um, you know, it can be as simple as a Ziploc bag. I mean, I've used a Ziploc bag before. Uh, you know, there's special travel cases. You know, there's even special brushes that, you know, that have a plastic handle that you can unscrew and use as a case. Um, you know, I just travel with my standard brush. You know, I throw it in a small little Ziploc bag that's TSA approved, uh, that I keep my toiletry stuff in it. And another travel hack is that if you're traveling with your safety razor, which I do, uh, if you disassemble it uh, so that you know it's in its separate parts, it's not going to be picked up, you know, by the X-ray scanner. As long as you have your blades and your checked luggage, you're fine. Uh, but the way that the TSA scanners work is that they're looking for the shape of a safety razor, uh, and that's what uh, flags it. So if you disassemble it into the three parts. Um, and then it doesn't get picked up and it saves you the hassle of having to open your luggage and pull that out uh, only for them to see that you don't have any blades. Uh, our next question from Shane, another great video. This was again on our traveling uh, uh, tips and he says, I bring all my wet shaving gear with me uh, and he too places uh, his badger brush in just a simple Ziploc bag. Uh, now there's all these uh, different types of traveling cases. Um, you know, if you have a dop kit, you know, you can put it in the dop kit, but they actually sell, you know, little hard plastic tubes that have a perforated holes so that, uh, again, you're protecting your brush, uh, but it's able to breathe and aerate. So that's nice. Uh, but I would encourage you uh, and to really look into kind of some of the small little cases and then also, you can go to Walgreens and you can get a small, you know, again, small little uh, container that I'll put my shave cream into and uh, just a little bit of a travel container because this exceeds, you know, the capacity uh, to be able to carry onto an airplane. So I'll do the same with my hair cream. I do the same with my uh, shave cream. You know, I keep my badger brush I'll throw in there. You know, I'll disassemble my safety razor, maybe check a few blades, um, and there you go. So all that's to say is that, you know, you can enjoy wet shaving while you're traveling just like you can enjoy it at home. You just need to modify uh, your routine a little bit in the packaging of how you travel with these items. But otherwise, I travel exclusively with my safety razor and have never had any problem. You know, personally, whenever I'm traveling, I really enjoy having my wet shaving items with me because it allows me to bring just some of the, you know, creature comforts from home uh, with me into the hotel or on the road whenever I'm traveling. So being able to travel with my shave cream, my safety razor, my badger brush is actually something uh, that makes travel uh, all that much more pleasurable for me. Another travel hack is that, you know, Taylorville Bond Street actually carries a, a travel stick that's like a shave puck, but in a stick format. It almost looks like a little deodorant thing that you can twist. Uh, and it's a great hack for travel because you can just rub that right on your beard. You don't get into any of the sizing constraints of a, a cream, shave cream. Uh, and then what you do is you rub it on your, your beard and then you take a wet brush and lather directly on your face. Uh, and so I've got a lot of friends, you know, that again, you know, will travel with a totally separate shave uh, stick uh, than the shave cream or shave puck they're using at home. And again, you know, wet shaving has been around for such a long time that there's all these, you know, really nuanced and specialized products that allow you to take all the comforts that you would otherwise have at home uh, with you on the road whenever you're traveling. Our next question is from Kyle uh, Aman, and it reads, you know, if you plan on doing a video on wet shaving, and we're gonna get into an entire series, uh, how important is the material used for the shaving brush? I've seen badger hair, horse hair, and also synthetic. How effective, safe, and visibly uh, noticeable are styptic pencils. 
Uh, and are they really that much better than the classic dad technique of pieces of toilet paper? Uh, and then finally, how safe uh, are they uh, in terms of allergic rea uh, reactions, et cetera, et cetera? So some great questions there, Kyle. You know, first with your question on the badger brush, uh, you know, there's so many different grades of badger. Now, the reason badger is used uh, in uh, shaving brushes is because uh, it holds uh, water and heat, which makes it really good for producing a hot lather. Uh, and so, you know, with the badger brush, you can get a beautiful foam and really work it into the skin. So not only are you generating a foam, but you're also massaging the shave cream into the beard to soften up the skin, to soften the beard, uh, and to really prepare it for a proper wet shave. Now, you know, there's a ton of different grades. Uh, you know, everyone calls it something different. And so my opinion on badger brushes is that if you buy a really good, high quality, a natural bristle badger brush, you know, uh, we sell some here, or we're actually having some made uh, exclusively for us uh, under the Kirby Allison Sovereign Grade brand. Uh, but, you know, it's one of those things that if you invest in something uh, good, spend a little bit of extra money, and you really can get some absolutely beautiful badger brushes with large knots, which create a large bloom. Uh, and so what you pay, the difference in price between a $7,500 badger brush and one that's three or $400, is the amount of badger that is uh, tied together in the knot, the size of the bloom, uh, and then really the combination of kind of how soft it is uh, with the stiffness of the bristle. You know, so really high quality, you know, badger brush like a, a silver uh, tip is going to be soft to the touch, but still voluminous enough to be stiff where you can really work it into the skin. So that's the difference. Uh, you know, we're gonna be carrying two brushes here, you know, at a Kirby Allison's Hanger Project. One's gonna be just our standard Kirby Allison brush, which is an entry level uh, brush using, you know, a nice high quality uh, natural badger uh, bristle. Uh, and then we're gonna have our sovereign grade, which is gonna be the best quality badger. You know, the highest quality brush that we can source made by exact specifications uh, from the best brush maker uh, around in the world. You know, another product that we have just for travel are matchbook styptic pencils, which uh, you open up and they're small little, you know, matches, but at the end are small, small little styptic uh, pens. And what they do is, you know, if you have a small nick, you break one of these off, you get it wet, uh, and then you put it on the face and it actually causes uh, the skin to close and stop bleeding. And so it's much more handy than using toilet paper uh, and is much more effective. And so, again, this is just something that I always keep uh, in my DOP kit for whenever I travel. Uh, for home, uh, we actually have the styptic uh, pencils and this is the same thing, but much larger. I mean, one of these will last you forever. Uh, I hardly cut myself anymore. Uh, but if you do uh, and you're bleeding, you know, wet this, uh, put this on the skin, and it actually closes the cut and causes it to stop bleeding. It's very, very effective. And it's just one of those items that cost almost no money. You know, we sell it here at the Hanger Project uh, and uh, is one of those things, one of the accoutrement that you should have as part of your shaving kit. Our last question today is from Kiss Kane, and it says, uh, it's actually on our Davidoff of London video. You know, uh, I, yeah, I collected cigars and love London. Shaving products from London are also top notch, as well as many of their fine goods. So Chris, you really make a great point. You know, whenever it comes uh, to accoutrement for the, uh, the well-dressed gentleman, there is no greater mecca in the world than London. You know, D.R. Harris, uh, Taylor of Old Bond Street, Castle Forbes, Floris, the umbrella makers, the cigar merchants, I mean, uh, the tailors, the shirt makers, the tie makers. I mean, London is uh, really producing some of the finest accessories for men anywhere in the world. And it's really uh, created a great variety and diversity of different products. And again, that's one of the things I love about London. And because of that reason, that's why so many of our Kirby Allison products are sourced from London, uh, because you know they have you know the greatest heritage and the greatest level of craftsmanship anywhere in the world. And so there's no question that we could go to Eastern Europe uh, and, or Asia for that matter and have a lot of these products made for less money, uh, but it will never have the quality and the craftsmanship as something that's made properly uh, from a heritage manufacturer out of the United Kingdom. If you've enjoyed this video or are interested in any of the products we discussed, please visit our website, hangerproject.com, where we have collected and curated the finest assortment of products for the well-dressed available in the world today. We carry a closed comb Parker a razor on our website right now. Uh, that's really a great razor. It's an excellent uh, beginner's razor, quite honestly, because of the closed comb. It's not gonna be overly aggressive. 
You know, that paired with their Astra blades is an absolutely fantastic place for someone to begin. Uh, we do have our Badger brushes uh, on the website right now. We're gonna be adding two of the Heritage uh, razors, a Merker and Mueller from Germany to the website soon. And so our goal with our shaving, uh, you know, category is to really have a highly, uh, a really tightly edited uh, selection uh, of the finest products in the world that I all use. You'll find everything on hangerproject.com that you need for a great wet shave. But once again, I'd like to take a moment to thank everyone for their comments and questions. It's your engagement on our YouTube channel that make these Q&A videos possible. Not only do these Q&As give me an opportunity to answer in greater depth a lot of the questions that I'm already answering, but they allow me to take a moment to acknowledge my appreciation for everyone's involvement in this channel. I've absolutely enjoyed this platform and how it's allowed me to connect more directly with all of you, and I really have fun interacting with you and answering your questions. If you haven't taken an opportunity to ask questions or make comments, I invite you to do so. Even if you don't have any questions to ask, just sharing your opinion about what shave products you use or your experience with wet shaving, uh, you know, make this channel more fun for everyone. I really enjoyed reading all those questions and comments personally and do try to get back to as many as I possibly can. If you enjoyed this video, give us a thumbs up and please subscribe to our channel and turn on your notifications by clicking the bell to the right of the subscribe button so that you can learn whenever we release new videos. If you have any questions or comments about anything we discussed on this video, please ask them in the comments section below. And of course, please visit hangerproject.com where we have the largest, most comprehensive collection of luxury garment care and shoe care accessories in the world, as well as many other incredible products for the well-dressed. And while you are there, subscribe to our newsletter to receive notifications of new product launches, promotions, as well as a weekly digest of all the videos we publish here on our YouTube channel. I'm Kirby Allison, and we love to help the well-dressed acquire and care for their wardrobes. Thanks for joining me.